Sometimes Democrats make the mistake of thinking terrible individuals aren't so bad if they share a common enemy. In this case, former White House Chief of Staff John Kelly is the terrible individual in question, and Trump seems to be the common enemy. But don't be fooled, because despite Kelly's disdain for Trump, his character reveals that he is a ruthlessly cruel person who loves to exploit human suffering for profit. CBS News revealed that Kelly joined the board of directors for Caliburn International, the parent company of Comprehensive Health Services, which runs detention centers for underage migrants. The company operates the largest detention site for underage migrants in Homestead, Florida. In addition to three shelters, shelters for unaccompanied migrant children in Texas. What makes these centers different from state or federally run detention centers is that they're managed like businesses looking to turn a profit and increase their investors rate of return. If you know anything about private prisons, you've probably heard some horror stories. And guess what? Homestead has stories of its own. Forbes reports that Caliburn's Homestead branch imprisons more than one in six of the 12,500 migrant minors currently in custody of the US government. Aside from the fact that making money off child imprisonment is gross, there's been some worry that Homestead is putting some of these kids in danger. Here's CBS News explaining why. Well, the facility houses about 2,200 teenagers as of April 24th, but is not subject to routine inspections from state welfare experts. Employees of this facility undergo FBI background checks, but do not undergo Florida's child abuse and neglect background check systems, which actually provides more information than a traditional criminal database. Yeah, maybe we should allow the state of Florida to conduct these more extensive background checks. And you know, that way we can ensure that these minors aren't being abused because it turns out that some of them already have been by former employees. In June of 2017, a 35-year-old CHS employee who used to work at Homestead was charged with and later found guilty of illicit sexual activity, including exchanging explicit videos and images with migrant minors she met at the shelter. She was later sentenced to 10 years in prison. Orlando Weekly also discovered that the Florida Department of Children and Families has investigated two separate cases of sexual abuse allegedly committed by caregivers at the facility. Now, the investigations apparently found no wrongdoing. But considering that Homestead is on federally owned land, Florida lawmakers and child welfare investigators have limited control over the situation because it's not in their jurisdiction. The Miami Herald also found that Frankie Santos, a felon who has a drug history and also a history with domestic violence, told a judge he was working with kids at the detention center saying, quote, I watch over the children to make sure they don't sneak off or go anywhere where they're not supposed to. The judge in that case was horrified at the thought of adults facing felony charges watching children. Judge Jerry Cohen says, quote, the United States government should be hanging its head in shame. It's disgusting that they would hire someone with an open felony to watch children. There have been other issues at Homestead. Neha Desai, the director of immigration at the National Center for Youth Law, says that they're packed in like sardines and they're provided absolutely no privacy. It's really disconcerting that a company is profiting off of the detention of children. Licia Welch, the senior director of legal advocacy and child welfare at the National Center for Youth Law, told NPR, we see extremely traumatized children, some of whom sit across from us and can't stop crying over what they're experiencing. Oh, but wait, there's more. Lourdes Perez Ramirez, a teacher who used to work at the facility, told the Miami Herald that, quote, it's basically like a prison. You cannot enter certain doors, you cannot go through certain areas, you cannot talk to the children unless you're the case manager. When a 13 year old cries every day, obviously something is wrong. In January, CBS found that Homestead wasn't even licensed. 
Lead attorney tells CBS News more than a dozen facilities were unable to produce licenses when inspected. This is a facility in Homestead, Florida, and it holds uh, as much as 10% of the entire population of unaccompanied children in the country. And uh, this facility and the others that were flagged by these lawyers, uh, are, are it's not just um, some random attorneys that are highlighting it. These are the team of, it's about 250 people who are the only ones allowed to really oversee the system under court order. So it turns out that these facilities are, in essence, breaking the law. Is that right? That's what the lawyers are saying. That's what they told the Department of Justice in a letter about three weeks ago. Homestead is allegedly breaking the law in other ways as well. In fact, US law indicates that these minors can only be held up to 20 days. But it turns out the average migrant child stays at Homestead for 60 days, which means the facility is breaking the law regularly with no fear of consequences. John Kelly apparently doesn't care about Homestead breaking the law either, since he's willing to join its parent company's board of directors. And let's not forget the insane declaration that Trump himself actually believes in the rule of law. In this race for the White House, I am the law and order candidate. Yeah. So the guy now facing multiple criminal investigations, who was also found defrauding students with his now defunct Trump University, is going to declare that he's all for the rule of law. And all of this goes down while he turns a blind eye to the unlawful activity that harms children at Homestead. But even if Trump had a squeaky clean record and really was in favor of law and order, we have to question whether some of our laws make sense in the first place. Because when the US allows prisons and detention centers to run like businesses, you can certainly expect nonsensical laws that criminalize nonviolent behavior to serve as a lucrative pipeline for inmates. Just take a broader look at America's prison system. The United States, the so-called land of the free, imprisons more people than any other country in the world. We have more individuals behind bars than China. In fact, half, half, 50% of the world's prison population is held in the US. Big business is the catalyst behind the explosion of America's prison population. Geo Group and Core Civic, the two largest for-profit prison corporations in the country, have both lobbied hard to perpetuate the war on drugs. And they love the draconian measures on undocumented immigrants because that means they get more taxpayer-funded government contracts to line their pockets. And for those who are gullible enough to think that Trump's policies toward immigrants is somehow saving Americans money, the numbers tell a completely different story. Comprehensive Health Services, which runs Homestead, pulled in $236 million in revenue, that's taxpayer money, in 2017. In the first seven months of that year, CHS reported a 19% net profit margin. CHS's revenue from government contracts nearly tripled between 2017 and 2018, mostly driven by the increased business at Homestead. In 2018, the federal government also paid CHS more than $210 million for its so-called shelter work. So don't be fooled into thinking John Kelly is somehow better than others in the Trump administration. After leaving the White House, Kelly opened up to the Los Angeles Times and made it seem as though he has some sort of conscience. He blames former Attorney General Jeff Sessions for the policy separating undocumented immigrants from their children at the border. Kelly saying the move took him by surprise. It was just one of the many controversies he weathered during his 17 months in the White House, something he called a bone crushing hard job. Yeah, let me teach Kelly a word in Spanish, mentiroso, which means you're a liar. Come on, we all know that Kelly is full of it. He's now happily, happily profiting off of the suffering of children, plain and simple. My guess is that he'd rather be doing so under the previous administration where the horrific cruelty lurked in the shadows and the media wasn't paying attention. Oh, did you like that video? Well, that's great, because you never have to miss another episode of No Filter. All you have to do is just hit the subscribe button below and ring the bell to get notified whenever we publish a new video.